Hi, happy Sunday. I'm going to tell you the Cheerio story. So once upon a time in Cheerio land, there was a teenager named Mr. Cheerio. So I don't know if you know about the, uh, the hierarchy of the Cheerio world, but the way it works is... Uh, there are three classes of Cheerios. The first class are the regular Cheerios. They are like the, you know, the lower class, middle lower class. They're like the blue collar workers and like the, uh, you know, the cashiers. The next are the frosted Cheerios and they're a little higher up. They're the franchise owners, the managers, that kind of thing. And then the highest class are the honey nut Cheerios. And these people are the top of society. They're the the politicians, the uh, CEOs, they're the, you know, the big musicians. So Mr. Cheerio is just a regular Cheerio, like his whole family is. For generations, all his family going back have been, you know, kind of mediocre. They're just, eh. They're just, you know, reg regular Cheerios. So he's in high school. He has like a like a 2.0 GPA. He's getting like, you know, straight C's. And his parents are fine with it because that's what they got when they were in high school. So one day, Mr. Cheerio decides that he wants a little uh, extra spending money. So he goes and gets a job at McCheerios. So he's working there, you know, he's living life, he's going to high school. Well, eventually, he graduates. And, you know, he, he just barely scrapes by, just barely, barely graduates, but he does make it. So he's still living with his parents, he's working at McCheerios, and one day he's at the cash register, and the manager's daughter walks in. And she is a nice Cheerio. She's a frosted Cheerio, obviously, because her dad is the manager. So she's, you know, beautiful glaze, the curves, the frosted Cheerio. It... Very nice. So he stammers out a... Hi. And she, you know, says hi to him. Uh, but, you know, there, there's no connection because they're, you know, they're worlds apart. So he thinks to himself, man, I really want to ask her out. But, oh, she's a frosted Cheerio and I'm just, I'm just a lowly regular Cheerio. So what he does is he starts working. Like, he starts doing, like, so good at his job. He starts, like, sucking up to the manager. He starts, you know, doing extra things, staying after hours to, like, clean and stuff. Until eventually, the manager of the McCheerios he works at notices. So the manager brings in Mr. Cheerio and says to him, Hey, so I'm gonna be retiring soon, and I was thinking I'd like to sell you this McCheerios. And Mr. Cheerio is like, Oh, I'm, I'd be honored, but I, I don't have the money for it. So the manager says, That's fine. I'll just loan you the money, and you can pay me back as you start to make money. So Mr. Cheerio is so excited. He's just out of his mind with excitement because now, now that he's a manager, he gets to be a frosted Cheerio. That's right, he gets promoted. Now he's a manager and he's a frosted Cheerio and everyone is so happy. Like his, his mom is going crazy with excitement. She's like calling up all her friends like, hey, my son is a frosted Cheerio! And they're getting, you know, they're getting kind of tired of her, but, you know, she's happy. And I guess that's all that matters. Everyone's happy. The manager's daughter was, of course, uh, she lived out of town. She was at Cheerio University, but she, she graduated and she moved back. And so Mr. Cheerio finally asked her, Hey, will you go on a date with me? And she said, yes. She said, Yes. So they went on a date, and they went on more dates, and eventually they got married. And they had lots of tiny little uh, frosted Cheerio babies, and they were so cute running around. So Mr. Cheerio keeps working hard, and eventually he has five and six, and then twelve and thirteen of these uh, McCheerio restaurants under his belt, and he's like super profitable, and he's making lots of money, and it's fantastic. So the higher-ups in the McCheerio company begin to notice. So one day, one of the people from corporate comes down, and uh, says to Mr. Cheerio, Hey, we've noticed that all of your restaurants are super profitable, so we were wondering, would you like to be an executive officer? So of course Mr. Cheerio accepts, and you know what this means. This means that he is a honey nut Cheerio. He gets refrosted, his whole family, his wife, and all his little, oh, cute little Cheerio babies, they're all Honey Nut Cheerios now. And they're so happy. His mom is out of her mind. She's calling all her friends like, hey, my son is a Honey Nut Cheerio. And they're, everyone's so happy and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. So now that Mr. Cheerio has been promoted, he upgrades. He gets this big house by the lake. He gets a boat. He gets like a, a yacht, a boat and a yacht. He gets two of them. It's beautiful beautiful. He's like rich and he has his wife and his kids and life is wonderful. So one day Mrs. Cheerio says to him, hey now that we're honey nut Cheerios we should throw a party and we can invite all our old frosted friends and all our new honey nut friends. And Mr. Cheerio is totally on board with this. He's so happy. Now I don't know if you know how parties in the Cheerio world work but uh, here, here's the way it is. What they'll do is they'll have all these bowls 
uh, filled with various liquids, usually milk, and they'll dip themselves in the bowls of liquid, and it's great. They, they, they love it. So a standard party will have, you know, like 2%, 1% skim milk for the people who are, you know, watching their diet kind of thing. And if it's super crazy, it'll have like chocolate milk. So Mr. Cheerio, now that he has so much money and he's just so high up in society, decides he's gonna go crazy with this party. He's gonna have, you know, the standard. He's gonna have 1%, 2%, skim milk, whole milk. He's gonna have half and half. He's gonna have chocolate milk. He's gonna have like... He's gonna have Sprite and soda. The Cheerios love the soda. Like, it's, it's crazy. They go crazy over it. The carbonation, like the bubbles, they fizz in the pores of these Cheerios and they love it. It's like cocaine. They can't get enough. It's beautiful. So Mr. Cheerio gets all the stuff for the party. He pours it in the bowls and he invites everyone over and it's great. Everyone brings their kids and all the little frosted Cheerios are mingling with the honey nut Cheerios and it's beautiful. And all the wives are together and they're gossiping and they're, everyone's just having a great time except Mr. Cheerio, because he's just so busy, he has to, you know, go around and refill all the bowls as they get depleted. You know, he's just busy out of his mind with all this, all these bowls. So his wife says to him, Hey honey, uh, just, just relax a little bit. Just go dip yourself in a bowl. Just at least one for me. So Mr. Cheerio, like, he doesn't really want to, but he does it for his wife to make at least her feel better for him. So Mr. Cheerio, you know, he doesn't want to go too crazy, so he gets in line for the 2%, but, you know, the 2% line is pretty long. So he goes over to the chocolate milk, and of course that is the longest line. So he decides, oh, what the heck. So he goes over to get in line to dip himself in the punch bowl, but there is no punch line. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Hope I didn't ruin your week. 